All right, in this video, we're going to go over the randint function uh, from Python. Um, so one of the important things to note with the randint function is that it's not a built-in function. All right, so in other words, we have to import this function from the module that it comes from. In this case, it comes from the random module. All right, so you can do either of your importing methods. You can import the entire random module and then use dot notation. Uh, you would use random dot randin to call the function. Or if you want to import the function individually, you could use the from keyword and say from uh, random import randint. Either way is fine. Uh, for our purposes, importing individually is fine because we're really not going to be doing anything uh, too long or uh, complex. But sometimes if you are writing really long or complex code, it can help to have the dot notation to make it a little clearer. But again, for our purposes, we don't really care. Uh, so the usage of the randint function and why we're going to be using it a lot is that it, it gives us a random integer. So you can kind of imagine that this would have a lot of different different applications um, that you could potentially, you know, it could be really useful for. Uh, so what we're going to do is give the function two arguments, a maximum and a minimum number, and it's going to give us a random integer in between those two numbers, inclusive of those two numbers. All right. So the syntax for this is randint and then parentheses your minimum number and your maximum number. So if we put randint 1 comma 10, that's going to give us a random number in between 1 and 10 inclusive. In other words, it could be anything between 1 and 10, including 1 and 10. All right, so if we try out uh, an example or two here, uh, we could do uh, from random import randint and again, these individual imports are okay for us because we're really doing uh, pretty short codes. Uh, and then if we want to use the randint function, we could say print randint, and then we could give it, let's say, 1 and 100 as the two numbers that we're going to uh, look between here. And then if we go ahead and run this, this will give us 13. And again, there's no proof that that's a random number. We could try again. We have 2. We could try again. We have 46, right? So a whole bunch of different numbers we're gonna end up with here. Uh, obviously, this is a very simple use of the randint function. We could uh, store this random number in a variable, which is probably more likely what you would do with this. We could do a for loop. If we say for x in range, and maybe we'll do 10 here and turn this into a for loop. Uh, then this will kind of be a little more proof that these numbers are kind of random. So if you look at our list here, right, we've got a whole bunch of pretty random numbers. Uh, the, the algorithm that's used for the randint function is not perfect. It's nothing that you ever want to use to like in, uh, encrypt things uh, because it's just not totally random, but it's a pretty good approximation of random. So uh, you can see here, we can, we can, you can probably imagine there's probably gears spinning in your head of the different ways that you could use the randint function. Uh, it is really useful. Um, I just want to show a quick example here of kind of a unique way to use the randint function. Uh, so I built, uh, we, we imported the randint module or the uh, randint function from the random module here. And what I did here is, uh, let's say uh, you wanted to pick a random color out of four choices, right? What you could do is assign each color to a number, an integer, and then choose that random integer, and then it would spit out the color that is associated with that integer. So here we've given the integer one, the color red, we've given the integer two, the color yellow, and we've given the integer three, the color green, four, the color blue, and so on. All right, so this, this random color function that we've built here is going to give us a random color based on this random function that we're going to run between, again, one and four because we have uh, all, all those colors here. Uh, so we can, again, test this with a for loop to print a bunch of random colors based on this uh, random function, random color function that we chose here. Uh, this really isn't uh, the best way to do this. There's actually another function that would be uh, a little more appropriate to use for this situation. But it's just, I thought, kind of an interesting uh, thought experiment into how we could kind of manipulate the random function and use it in different ways. Uh, so if we do run this, uh, you can see here, we get a bunch of different random colors from the ones that we chose. Uh, so again, this is returning the string uh, value of the color that we associated with a certain random integer. 
All right, so th this would be an interesting way of using the randin function. Again, uh, there is a better way to do this and we'll get into that soon. Thanks for watching this video on the randint function and I'll see you in the next one.